This is Inside Africa. Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation, is home to 75 million students from preschool to university. As the pandemic set in and activity in schools ground to a halt, the world of online learning kicked into high gear. We have to find ways to make virtual education work. And that means that on, on, in some cases you borrow from what classroom has, and in some cases you um, stick to what works best digitally that may not exist in the physical world. Leading the way in a new era of digital learning, they're harnessing the power of education technology in Nigeria while dealing with the unique challenges that come with it. The issue of electricity is also a major problem, you know, some classes not being able to hold because they're not available, devices down. These are Nigeria's EdTech innovators. This is Inside Africa. With more and more students relying on remote learning, the real-time challenges of teaching are hitting home. What if you had a way to know from the onset what the gaps in this child's learning was? Ahead, an ed tech innovator closing the learning gap. As the pandemic took hold earlier this year, schools in Nigeria transitioned to online learning. Teachers and students were forced to adapt to an entirely new format. In Lagos, one ed tech startup focused on making sure students didn't get left behind. My name is Boyo Shinaga, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Greatly. Greatly is a personalized learning platform for students and schools from kindergarten up to grade 12. It takes data from practice or homework and uses that to personalize learning resources, whether it's video lessons or practice or recommending tutor intervention. Oshinaga's light bulb moment came after seeing firsthand a teacher frustrated about a student's learning challenges. What if you had a way to know from the onset what the gaps in this child's learning was from the very beginning and then you're able to kind of solve that problem based specifically on these topics that they're weakness. Our thesis at Grayley is that technology can and should augment the teacher by leveraging algorithms that personalize resources, create the effect that a one-on-one -on -one tutor experience would deliver, um, which is literally the best education experience you can have. He decided to build a solution that would help both students and schools. Grayley offers kind of like a robust learning system that allows the schools to have engaging class experiences online, a subscription service that includes daily practice and video lessons. You can also then book personalized tutor sessions, kind of help drive like academic performance and improve some parts of it. Having experienced a few struggles of his own in school, it wasn't a stretch for Oshinaga to come up with a tool that could create a supportive learning environment. Where we had in, in our secondary school a, a class we called special class of the best of the best, and everybody was really stretching themselves to see if they would be the, the number one. And I didn't quite get to break into the top ten, and it, you know, this broke my heart. And then I started realizing that people had special strengths in special subjects. And so as I got into university, this passion grew, and kind of I felt I needed to do something about it. At the heart of transforming education is the teacher and data, but there's very little work on understanding the data around assessment. What do students know and what do they need to know for to be prepared for the 21st century? Oshinaga says having a global outlook is important for Gradley and for the students it supports. The frustration in Africa is that you know that if we do not train our young people to think, to come up with innovation, to be um, at cutting edge in how they're thinking through problems of the world and solving it, that you would have gotten to a point where we now have a lost opportunity. As an entrepreneur, or as entrepreneurs in the, in the education uh, technology space, we build around what would deliver the best experience with the least 
uh, possible resources, whether internet or other types of resources available. A big believer in fitness, he feels you actually can run away from your problems sometimes. So I'm at the foot of Ikoyu Bridge, and I usually run the length of it from here to the end and back. It takes me about 30, 40, 40 minutes. About. Fitness kind of seems to be very, very helpful with like my thinking process. This literally happened to me recently, where I was struggling with thinking about how to build a new website and some of the new things that we want to do. And I struggle with it almost all day. And in the evening, I go for a run, and I come back, and in 30 minutes, I'm like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and everything comes together. But running alone is not enough to overcome the daily challenges of running a startup. Boye credits his former protege and Gradley co-founder for helping him stay in the race. Shei Adelaju is a co-founder at Gradley, but he eventually became one of my proteges in 2017, where I um, basically did the same thing I would normally do with a protege, which is take him through all of my business concerns. So working within that one year was me learning all of the things that translates to bringing those passions together to something that can be sustainable in a business like Gradley. And I was going to start Gradley, he was, you know, he was already working in a venture capital firm at the time, but I was like, you know, I think you need to come back and let's do this thing. Uh, interestingly, he has also a passion for education, so it was, you know, like passions coming together. Adelaju says that his passion, his background as a teacher, and his experience being mentored have helped him see education differently. All of education is really mentorship. It's about helping the students see what is possible, who they can be like, and help them become that thing. So if you put the right teacher you know, in front of the right students, everyone will aspire to be like their teacher. If you want someone to succeed, just give the person an example of success and put it in front of the person, the person will most likely succeed. Meanwhile, elementary school teacher and online tutor, Gloria Unamka Elendu, says the pandemic meant teachers were forced to step up their game. Hello, Salma. Online Learning for Teachers came with a lot of um, work because now you had to work on yourself, you had to work on your curriculum, you had to work on um, your delivery. You just need a little confidence. A lot of teachers now had to be on their toes to make sure that each topic is as impactful as it is supposed to be so that it can be impactful at a time when you're teaching a particular concept that you want the child to learn. And I guess that is also one of the benefits of um, remote learning. It's highly personalized. With both her parents educators, Unamka Elendu says teaching has always been a vocation for her. The pandemic's push toward virtual learning gave her the chance to spread her wings. Working with Gradley, you know, gave me an opportunity to be able to experience a vast majority of children from different backgrounds, different school setting, and different curriculum. For me, I felt it was a kind of a good exposure, and I feel all of this has or will eventually make me a better teacher because now I don't just have a single experience. As the new school year continues to experiment with a mix of in-person and online learning, Nigeria's ed tech industry has found its stride. Virtual learning has changed the game. Remote learning hasn't come to replace the conventional learning method, but it has come to stay and it has come with its own benefits. Being the best version of myself in everything, in every area of my life, leaving no stone unturned in terms of the fact that I've put effort behind everything worth doing. Inside Africa, in association with Zenith Bank.